Springfield, Massachusetts, also known as the city of firsts or the city of homes. For a small city with historical context, citizens here often don't know how much came from Springfield. Sometimes, you just need to learn the history of your own surroundings. Even in the dark, things that seem abnormal from your surroundings are still possible to view. Even when there's no context. For a citizen living in Springfield, I never want to allow myself to live without any context. There's always hidden gems anywhere you live that can help you succeed in life. All you need to do is just find the answers. Even if the answers are as simple as ice cream. My name is Zul Manzi, and I'm ready to find the answers. In order to find the answers on how Friendlies became so successful, I had to interview the right individuals who knew the story the best. And there was no better people to interview other than Friendly's historian Rose Slate and of course, the two men who started Friendly's, S. Presley and Curtis Blake, also known as the Blake Brothers. Nineteen thirty five, the exact middle of the year when the United States was going through the Great Depression. Curtis and Press's father, Herbert Blake, was working as a sales manager for Standard Electric Time Company. Meanwhile, their mother Ethel was figuring out ways how to keep her boy self sufficient. In nineteen twenty nine to nineteen thirty nine, you know, the Great Depression. How did your family how did they manage to go through the Great Depression? Well, my father was working and he was uh, smart enough so that he, he, he never got laid off. His salary dropped, but he never got laid off. Obviously, you know, uh, the Blake brothers, uh, their mother was basically was Ethel the one. Blake. Ethel Blake yep. was the one who was kind of like pushed them uh, to say, hey, you know, you guys, you know, it's the Great Depression. You know, instead of finding a job, you can create your well, own job. Well, you couldn't find a job because right. job lines gave way for bread lines. There were just not enough jobs back then. And she thought, if they can't find a job, we're going to create a job. And she truly felt idle hands were the devil's workshop, and she was not going to let her boys stay idle. And the ice man told her, my mother was a great talker, and so was he. He told my mother, there was a guy on the other side of town had an ice cream shop. He made his own ice cream and sold it like crazy. <laughs> so she looked at it and found out where he bought the freezer. He sold uh, my mother and father on a, an ice cream freezer. A, a small ice cream freezer. Put it in a storefront, make the ice cream right there, and make a a, a, a better product because it was, we made it every night, sold it the next day. It didn't have any ice crystals in, like uh, often happened. Other people, they take the dipper out of the water and, and every drop of water becomes a, a block of ice. And, uh, and we offered 24 flavors. That's where I put it in the store and help pick out the location. That's how we got started. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on Boston Road in Springfield, Massachusetts, where the original Friendly Restaurant was located back in 1935. However, in 2017, the original restaurant is now a tattoo place. So next to the tattoo place, it's a pizza restaurant. 
Now, this pizza restaurant was also where another friendly restaurant was located. You gotta remember, it was 1935. So the economy was really bad because it was the Great Depression. So things were exceptionally cheap. If you wanna now have a first restaurant in 2017, you gotta sell some lemonades for 25 cents with some cardboards outside. That's just the truth. In the early years, the Blake brothers had to build their company with their own hands. For only 16 bucks, Press carved their first friendly sign out of wood. Kurt purchased an assembly kit to build their first delivery vehicle with only one wheel. With little resources, the brothers relied on their diverse talents to establish their early successes. However, as the company grew, the brothers still faced hardship. My brother and I, our skills, they meshed and complemented each other beautifully. When I got drafted in February of 42, uh, my, I had to go to Alabama and tr basic training, infantry basic training, and that left my brother with the two original shops to operate. And he alone, he came up, he, he deserves all the credit for coming up with a share of the profit scheme. We thoroughly believe in sharing the profits with the people who help create the profits. A lot of people believe that success happens quickly, and a lot of people oh. expect to be successful right. so quickly. Obviously, that's not the case. Right. And with the Blake brothers, in terms of like the timing, I mean, obviously during World War II, they had to close. Yes, they did close. Kurt went overseas in the war and Press stayed here and he took his sugar allotment and turned it into sugar syrups, sold it to different companies and was able to put in the bank $70,000 in the 40s and they took that money and they would reinvest it. So they bought two more pieces of property then they'd save their money again before they'd reinvest. During World War II, the GI Bill, it made veterans easier for them to get a job. How important was that to make Friendly a better company? Returning veterans get a job. So they, if you, if you hire this man here, we'll pay you so much a month to teach him. People you work with is very important. If you can't get along with this guy, you go to another place or he'll go to another place because I don't like the atmosphere, or I don't like the hours. Does this guy have an attitude he wants to get ahead, or is he just uh, working for a paycheck? After continued growth of new restaurants, manufacturing plants, more employees, and so much more success, Friendly started to establish themselves as not just an ice cream shop, but as a pivotal landmark in Massachusetts. In the early 1970s, Press Blake bought about 10 acres of land and decided to have a landscape design welcoming commuters from the Mass Pike to Wilbraham, Massachusetts, home of friendly ice cream. However, the process for the sign wasn't easy. They had to have a hearing, they had to have an injunction to stop them from ripping it out. They had a jury of the peers and everybody unanimously said they wanted to keep this. So now this is like a Massachusetts iconic landmark. Mm. It's awesome. Yeah. And to this day, Press Blake still wants to know, did they mow it? Are lights working? <laughs> is a flag up? Yeah. He, he's always asking about this because that's still his baby. In 1979, the Blake brothers sold their company to Hershey Foods Corporation and retired. However, they still contribute to keep friendlies going strong to this very day. I wondered what key elements helped the Brick Brothers continue to go after their goals through difficulties and how those elements can translate in today's world. Never having any debt made all the difference in the world. Most people spend half their life working for the governments paying taxes and the other half they pay for the money for people they borrow the money from. We started by borrowing $547 from our parents, which we paid back a year or so later with $600. 
and that's the last money we borrowed. Well, you got to make yourself felt because you work hard. Some people who are in this bench, they don't work very hard. If you work hard, some people I know, they get through at five o'clock, they go home. Some people, I'm gonna stay a little longer, no more money, but they see, I work till six o'clock, I don't get paid for it, but he really wants to be successful. Nobody does anything alone. Nobody does anything all alone. So I think that's very important. You gotta have the self-determination to be better. If you don't have that determination, you're not gonna get ahead. Okay? Definitely. The Blake brothers helped me find the context that I was looking for. Some say there's no inspiration in a city like Springfield, Massachusetts. But I say, all you need to do is just find the answers. Their perseverance and efforts helped them become part of Springfield's historical landscape. They have changed lives all throughout the city and beyond. And they did all this by starting out with one ice cream parlor. They built themselves one scoop at a time. And the best way to soak up my experience is to sit here and eat coffee ice cream, which was one of the original flavors created by the person who told them to start their company, their mother, Ethel Blake.